Welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. You can support our podcast by subscribing to our Patreon. In gratitude for your help, we will give you access to a series of exclusive episodes on wartime life in Ukraine. From this series, you can learn how ordinary Ukrainians live in times of invasion, what they eat, how they travel, celebrate, what music they listen to, and much more. The latest episode is about education in times of invasion. To get access to all this good stuff, follow the link in the description below and subscribe to our Patreon. It starts just from $5 a month. My name is Artem and here is the news. 194 days less the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The state-owned nuclear energy generating company of Ukraine, Energoatom, unloaded and disconnected from the grid last power unit number 6 of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, reports Interfax Ukraine. Before, the last line that connected the nuclear power plant to the power system of Ukraine has been disconnected as a result of a fire that occurred due to Russian shelling. As Energatom noted, in the last three days the Russian forces have continued intensive shelling of the territory around the Zaporizhia power plant. The president of Ukraine said that this is the second time when due to the Russian shelling the Zaporizhia power plant is one step away from a radiation disaster. He pointed out that the mission of the International Atomic Energy Agency that visited the plant last week will present its findings on September 6, and Russian shellings right before that shows that the Kremlin does not care what the agency says. It does not care what the international community decides. Russia is interested only in keeping the situation the worst for the longest time possible, believes Zelensky. He thinks that this can be corrected only by strengthening sanctions, only by officially recognizing Russia as a terrorist state at all levels. He also discussed this issue during a phone call with the French President Emmanuel Macron. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine Metro Kuleba believes that the reason why Russia is trying to disrupt the work of the nuclear power plant is so that Ukraine could not help the EU ease the energy crisis this winter by exporting electricity. The UK Foreign Minister Lee Strass won nomination for the new Prime Minister instead of Boris Johnson, reports Ukrainform. It is expected that the Queen will appoint her on September 6. Ukrainian Ambassador to the UK Vadim Pristaiko expects a phone call from Truss to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky after her formal appointment, as well as a visit to Ukraine. In his evening video address, Zelensky said that he is looking forward to the start of cooperation with Liz Truss as a new prime minister. He stressed that people of Ukraine know her well. The president believes that together they will be able to do a lot more to protect the two nations from all Russian destructive efforts and preserve unity. Zelensky held a phone call with Boris Johnson and thanked him, calling the UK prime minister a great friend of Ukrainian people. German Media Spiegel informs that NATO may cover 50% of Ukraine's winter equipment needs, reports Zerkalo Tizhnya. According to the media sources, Ukrainian Defense Minister Oleksiy Reznikov gave to the alliance a list of needs of the Ukrainian army for the upcoming winter, and NATO is coordinating member states' response to this request. The alliance is hoping to meet at least half of them. In particular, it is about warm uniforms, winter shoes and winter tents. At the same time, according to the publication, the search for winter equipment is difficult, in particular because stock in most countries are mainly reserved for national consumption, and there is also demand for winter clothing on the world market. The US, Canada, Sweden and Finland has already promised supplies. Germany plans to make contributions as well, even though it has problems with stock. Prime Minister of Ukraine Denis Megal stated that 326 billion US dollars in direct damage from Russia's aggression has already been verified by the government and the World Bank, reports Ekonomichna Pravda. The Prime Minister noted that out of this amount, 105 billion US dollars is the verified amount needed for the restoration of various facilities. According to Shmigal, $17 billion is needed for quick recovery projects, $3.4 billion of which Ukraine will receive already this year, and the rest in 2023. 
The general staff of Ukraine informs that Ukrainian forces successfully repelled enemy offensive attempts in the areas of Solidar, Zaitseve, Shakhta Butivka and Spartak in the Donetsk region, reports Unian. Air Defense Forces shot down a guided Russian cruise missile over the Mykolaiv region yesterday. The Air Force of Ukraine carried out more than 30 strikes against the Russian troops. The enemy continues to station its personnel and military equipment in kindergartens and churches in the Kherson region and also uses the Holy Trinity Church in Malakomushuvaha, Kharkiv region as a field hospital. According to the general staff, the total combat losses of the Russian forces in Ukraine exceeded 50,000 personnel. Only yesterday, Russia has lost about 350 of its military. According to the U.S. Institute for the Study of War, Russian President Vladimir Putin publicly praised forces of the so-called Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics controlled by Russia to motivate proxy recruitment and reframe Russian coverage of the war, reports Ukrainska Pravda. Reportedly, Putin stated on September 5th that personnel of the 1st and 2nd Army Corps of these so-called republics are fighting better in Donbas than professional Russian soldiers. Putin insinuated that he is unhappy with the performance of the Russian Ministry of Defense. The experts believe that this way Putin also wanted to refocus coverage of the war in the Russian media space away from the fighting in southern Ukraine. Russian forces have increasingly relied on DPR and LPR personnel as core fighting forces, and the Kremlin likely seeks to rhetorically elevate their role in the war to enhance recruitment and increase morale. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine. Thank you.